In public reporting, there is always talk about an infinite universe. Even if we still do not know in detail how the spatial manifestations of the cosmos are shaped, it's certain that the concept of infinity does not correspond to reality. Well, this applies at any rate to the existence of the cosmos. In this respect, the experts agree to the fact that our galactic home will reach its end one day. Different theories exist about how this cosmic finale will form exactly. If the common opinion of scientists winds up being true, however, the last chapter of the universe has already begun. What this knowledge is based on and which developments will lead to the end of the universe, you'll find out in our video today. Want to learn more about the groundbreaking discoveries and unmistakable spectacles in the universe? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click the bell to never miss one of our videos again. By giving us a thumbs up, you're motivating us and showing that we can keep you excited with the content of our posts. The Decoding of the Cosmos Although Albert Einstein passed away on April 18, 1955, the legacy of the exceptional physicist lives on to this day. As is well known, the theory of relativity was to revolutionize our concept of space and time, and it also made possible a description of the cosmos itself. In one point, however, the genius was gravely mistaken. Einstein firmly believed that the universe was a static entity that would remain unchanging forever. After an exchange with the astronomer Arthur Stanley Eddington, however, the physicist came to the realization that he was wrong. What Einstein retrospectively called the greatest folly of his life is now known as the expansion of the universe. According to this, our cosmic world expands further and further with every moment that passes. However, the universe does not grow into an existing space. It's rather the space itself which increases unchecked. As a result of this, also the distances which gape between the biggest cosmic structures increase more and more. However, this development of the incessant expansion does not only affect the distances, also the relative importance of matter, radiation, neutrinos, and dark energy is affected by it. Basically, the era of the universe can be divided into six different ages, and we are already living in the last one. To understand what leads the researchers to this conclusion, we have to take a little detour into the world of theory. But don't worry, we will try to keep this topic as compact as possible. Basically, everything that exists contains a certain amount of energy. As soon as the cosmos now expands, the volume of these energy forms also changes. Against the background that the universe has been expanding since its birth, it can be stated that the longer the cosmos has existed, the more it has expanded. For the future, this means that the universe will be cooler in the future than it was in the past. Gravity also once presented itself more uniformly. Now the laws of physics allow us to look beyond the as-is state of the cosmos, provided that we apply them correctly to the universe and match the possible solutions with real observations and measurement data. We can make statements about both the past and the future of our cosmic world. In this way, experts were also able to turn back the wheel of time by billions of years and arrive at the Big Bang. If one looks at the expansion of the cosmos backwards, one arrives sometime at a point at which matter and the energy density become infinite. Thereby, it was exactly that extreme original state of the singularity from which matter, space, and time emerged together and paved the way for the unfolding of the universe. However, this little game can also be applied to the reverse case. We can extrapolate today's universe into the distant future and thus, predict the ultimate fate of the cosmos. Cosmic Chapters Considering the behavior of the universe, its evolution can be provided with some dividing lines. In this way, we find that the total era of the cosmos can be divided into six different ages. The inflationary era, which is assumed to have taken place immediately after the Big Bang, serves as the starting point. This in turn is followed by the cosmic chapter of the primordial soup, which extends to the occurrence of the last transformative nuclear and particle interactions in the early universe. The plasma era, in turn, 
encompasses the end of non-scattering nuclear and particle interactions and the cooling of the universe, which allowed the emergence of stable neutral matter. The so-called Dark Age picks up right here and ends at the complete re-ionization of the intergalactic medium by the first stars and galaxies. During the Stellar Age, the newborn structures of the cosmos began to come together in gravitationally bound assemblages. The sixth and final chapter of the universe is the era of dark energy. Driven by this mysterious force, the expansion velocity of the cosmos intensifies so that the individual structures are irrevocably accelerated away from each other. While this enumeration may occur within a few moments, it encompasses processes that took place over a period of billions of years. Yet most of the fundamental events that will determine the fate of the cosmos took place some time ago. In order to understand what is meant by this, it is worth taking a closer look at the individual ages of the universe. Inflationary Age Before the Big Bang, the universe was not filled with matter, antimatter, dark energy, or radiation. Instead, it housed a form of energy inherent in space itself, a form of energy that caused the cosmos to expand extremely rapidly and exponentially. This led to the fact that from the singular original state, a construct of unimaginable size grew. The quantum fluctuations that accompanied this rapid process eventually created the cosmic foundation on which our present universe was built. However, cosmological inflation was to end as abruptly as it had occurred. All the energy that space itself had harbored was converted into particles, antiparticles, and radiation. Primordial Soup So when the universe was filled with matter, antimatter, and radiation, it began to cool. As soon as particles collided with each other, they produced those particle-antiparticle pairs that are permissible according to the laws of physics. Mainly, these constellations were constrained by the energies of the collision partners involved. In the same breath with the cooling of the universe, the energy started to decrease, making it more and more difficult to create massive particle-antiparticle pairs. However, so-called annihilations or perannihilations and other particle reactions continued unabated. Just one to three seconds after the Big Bang, antimatter had disappeared. All that remained was matter. Three to four minutes after the birth of the cosmos, stable deuterium was again able to form, enabling what is known as nucleosynthesis of light elements. A few radioactive decays and nuclear reactions later, all that remained was a hot, ionized plasma composed of photons, neutrinos, atomic nuclei, and electrons. Plasma Age Once these light nuclei formed, they embodied the only positively charged objects in the universe. Of course, they were balanced by an equal amount of negative charge in the form of electrons. Accordingly, nuclei and electrons joined together to form atoms, opening the way to star formation. The problem? They were hopelessly outnumbered by photons. Every time an electron and an atomic nucleus joined, a high-energy photon came along and blew the constellation apart. Only when the universe had cooled significantly could stable, neutral atoms finally form. At the beginning of the plasma era, the energy content of the cosmos was dominated by radiation. At its end, this role was taken over by normal and dark matter. To place it in time, this third phase is dated about 380,000 years after the Big Bang. The Dark Age Filled with neutral flavors, gravity was finally granted to stimulate the structure-forming processes in the universe. Why this cosmic era is also known as the Dark Age becomes clear to us when we take a closer look at these neutral atoms. For in fact, they were typically in the form of cosmic dust, which swallowed the radiated starlight over a large area. So, to literally shed some light on the matter, the intergalactic medium had to be re-ionized. This process required not only a high rate of star formation, but also an enormous structure of ultraviolet photons. And this required gravity, the beginning of the cosmic web, and above all, time, about 550 million years. 
Stellar Age. After the Dark Age was over, the universe became permeable to starlight, energetically dominated by normal and dark matter. Gravitationally bound structures assumed ever greater proportions. The rate of star formation rose and rose, reaching its radiant peak about three billion years after the Big Bang. New galaxies were born, while existing ones continued to grow, merge, and come together in gigantic galaxy clusters. However, the amount of free gas slowly but surely began to decrease. The pulsating cradles of stars had swallowed up too much of it. Thus, the rate of newborn stars also began to decline, while the density of matter steadily decreased as a result of the unchecked expansion process. A new form of energy entered the cosmic stage, the mysterious dark energy. Some 9.2 billion years after the Big Bang, this embodied the dominant energy component of the universe and ushered in its final era. Age of Dark Energy Commonly regarded as one of the greatest mysteries of modern space exploration, dark energy has been a major force in the history of the universe. Introduced in the late 1990s to explain the accelerating expansion of the cosmos, the physical properties of this invisible form of energy have still not been deciphered. In fact, it has not yet been experimentally detected. However, it is certain that the accelerated expansion of the universe will one day also lead to its end, while the unbound objects will eke out a lonely existence in the vast expanse of nothingness. Their bound counterparts, such as galaxies and galaxy clusters, will merge to form a gigantic elliptical galaxy. The existing stars will die sooner or later, and the birth of new stars will eventually come to a halt. Planets will crash into their parent stars or their remnants on spiraling orbits. Even black holes will eventually evaporate due to Hawking radiation. All that will be left in this lightless place of emptiness will be black dwarf stars and isolated masses. And now we want your opinion. What do you think about the final era of the cosmos? We are already curious about your comments. Finally, please have a look at the other videos on our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the images in the credits. Thanks for your interest. Take care, and we'll see you next time.